Hi, John. So how are things going down at South Morton Boxing Club? Yeah, we're all good. Thanks, Peter. We're all good. You know, cracking on with the online classes, the outside classes. And the big announcement, I believe, is coming Tuesday about, you know, when we can open, hopefully July the 4th, and what restrictions will be in place. But, you know, we're sort of chomping at the bit for that. So, uh, but everything's going well. Fantastic. So you're here with Tyrone. Uh, just want to introduce and talk us through the subject of why there should be a statue to Muhammad Ali in Abingdon. Well, I, I really wanted to introduce a fascinating story, a fascinating part of the Ali story, and, and Tyrone is a living piece of it because his father, Paddy Monaghan, had a very, very close relationship with Muhammad Ali. Um, and on the subject of whether there should be a sta an Ali statue, I think, you know, he's a kind of unifying figure, a great man. I think we should have a statue for him. I mean, I know people are tearing down statues all, the, all over the place, but we're proposing to put one up. And it's a statue of Muhammad Ali. And if we're going to have a statue of Muhammad Ali, and he did have a close relationship with Britain, he came here a lot. Obviously, he had the two Cooper fights, um, but he, he really had a, a soft spot in his heart for, for Britain. So we're going to have that. Where should we put that statue? Well, I think we should put it in Abingdon. Why? Because Muhammad Ali visited Abingdon on many occasions. He visited Tyrone's house to see his great friend Paddy Monaghan. And to briefly encapsulate that story, um, when Ali was stripped in 67 for refusing to be inducted uh, into the US Army and go and fight in Vietnam, he was uh, stripped of his title, his, his license was taken away to box. So it was really the wilderness years. You know, he was he was broke. He was the most hated man in America. Everybody thought the Ali story was over. Paddy Monaghan, Tyrone's father in Abingdon, thought this is not fair. This is the wrong thing to do. He <clears throat> started the Muhammad Ali fan club. He raised a, how many, a signature petition? 22,000, 22, And those were in the days when you didn't have the internet. You had to stand in the town centre and get people to sign your petition. He delivered this petition to the US Embassy. He wrote to Ali in support. Ali wrote back. And obviously this triggered something in Ali. He thought, you know, somebody is really supporting me and working hard to support me in the UK. As soon as he got his licence back in 1970 and was allowed to travel again in 71, he came to the UK and the first thing he did was look up Paddy Monaghan and visit his house in Saxton Road. And that was the start of a beautiful friendship and a friendship that endured for the rest of their lives. Um, you know, both men now gathered to God, God rest them. But uh, they, they had a, a lifelong friendship and Ali visited Saxon Road multiple times. Every time he was in the UK, he flew Paddy out to, among other places, Deer Lake to stay at his house. He even cornered uh, uh, you know, Ali in a few fights. So it was a wonderful friendship. And obviously Ali had a very soft spot for Paddy and uh, visited many times. I mean, Ty, can you elaborate a bit on what it was? What was it like to have the superstar, the megastar, Mount Ali John, I'm looking into your front room in Saxon Well, first of all, you've done your own work very well. I can't, <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't add to what you just said. Thank you very much. Um, he first um, visited us just straight after he fought George Foreman. Mm -hmm. That was the first visit. And I was only a child at the time and um, I was like numb, you know. It's like he, he visited us so, so many times. We think it was around about 20 times he visited us. Yeah. Sometimes it would uh, let it out to the public. Other times it's just like private visits. Well, I've seen that wonderful picture in front of your house. I think that was it was just after the Foreman fight with a sea of 1970s oh, children God. outside your house. There and was, a great man just standing in the door talking. There was thousands. that The police um, had to pull in the army for crowd control. Yeah. That's how bad it The whole town just stopped. It was just amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's just... Uh, Oh, great memories, John. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah fantastic. Yeah, but I, I, I see the pictures of you sparring with him in the back garden. As yeah, well. yeah. Oh, that, that's um, that was amazing. He says, um, he says, Tyrone, do you want to do some sparring? I said, come on, then, chap. He, he took out his white gloves. I've never seen white gloves in them. They, it's like black or red, wasn't it? You know. Yeah. And he brought out these white gloves. I'm like, wow. So I put on my little red gloves. He says to me, he says, there's no rounds. He said, Who, whoever finishes first. He pointed to a little beat up metal dustbin with a rubber lid on it. He said, that's going to be the corner stall. He said, whoever, whoever loses has got to sit on that stall. And uh, I was playing about sparring and all that stuff. It was amazing. And um, I beat him. He sat on the stool. <laughs> <laughs> He's lucky that one didn't get on his record. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have to work on that one. <laughs> I'd have a chat with WBC and WBI, I reckon. And I also remember, I remember your pictures of your dad and him outside the house in Saxon Road, reenacting the thriller. Oh, Manila. yeah. Because your dad yeah. was a short fighter. Yeah, well, my was dad, he was, 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 was a former world middleweight bare knuckle champion. And, and in them days, bare knuckle fighting was... Um, Kept quiet, you know, it's not yeah. like today. But uh, yeah, they they was uh, they reenacted the uh, Ali Fraser, yeah, flipped through in a minute, and that was just like amazing, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah great memories. Yeah. So just just an incredible story, Peter, and like I say, a place that very very close to Ali's heart. So, you know, we, we'd love to see a statue at the end of Saxon Road of Ali, and maybe commemorating that friendship. Um, but you know, at least a blue plaque on that house. This is a real piece of, of history, well, well, not he, just he, 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 social um, history. He uh, sorry for burning there, John. He, he um. We moved twice in Saxton Road. 
the first time he came to uh, that house of the George Foreman fight was 100, no, it was 13 Saxton. Yeah. And then he visited us more times in 111 Saxton Road. So there should be one of those blue plaques on uh, both houses, like, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know if the council too tight to put that up or whatever, I don't know. But it should, that plaque should have been up there a long time ago. Yeah. And uh, I reckon what you're saying there about having a statue, this uh, should be a Muhammad Ali statue and it should be in Saxton Road where he visited. Yeah. Yeah. Place close to his yeah. heart. Well, if we can get these boats in, Peter. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know, well, my question, I've got a couple of questions. First of all, there's an Ali statue in Liverpool. Yeah. So why would you think it's worth having a statue in Abingdon as well as in Liverpool? What's the argument for Abingdon? And secondly, given all the problems at the moment with statues generally, are you not worried that an Ali statue might maybe get vandalised or there might be a couple of problems? What do you think? I think on the first point, it's because he always visited Abingdon. I know, you know, he had, he had a very soft spot for the UK and many places in the UK, but this was the one place he came back to time and time and time again. And, uh, you know, he had that very close friendship with Paddy. So that's why I think it's a special place to commemorate Ali in the UK. Um, you know, and on the second point of statues, yes, statues are controversial now, but Ali started off as a polarizing figure. You know, um, like I, as I said, in 67, he was probably the most hated man in the US because he did preach racial segregation and, um, you know, he started off as this polarizing figure and then became this unifier. You know, he made this incredible journey um, because people saw how he stuck to his principles and, and saw the type of man he was and saw his character. So he was a real unifier. And I think that's why we should have a statue of him. Uh, and, you know, I think, you know, even in this incarnation, he can carry on that unifying. Can I put in there, John? Yeah. Um, my dad named Muhammad Ali a great name, and it's known all around the world now. But it's my dad that called Muhammad Ali the people's champion, and that's what he is, the people's champion. It doesn't matter what colour you are, black, red, yellow, even if you're a little green man from Mars, he is the people's champion, and that statue should go up in Abingdon, Saxon Road. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, well, thanks very much for joining. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we wrap it? No, I think that's it. Please vote, and let's maybe let's try and get a bit of a movement going here. Let's get a bit of momentum behind this campaign. And uh, maybe we should do another petition tie to get this going. I reckon we should. Yeah. I reckon yeah. we should. Yeah, Six fantastic. years from 2224, shall we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Well, very nice to meet you. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Speak to you soon.